Today it's been coming off the oh, roof. Not by the city center. No, it's just not. Like bombs going off. Yeah. We're we're live. Okay. Okay. I'd like to call the select board meeting to discuss the budget for order on December fifth at six o'clock. I don't either. My name is Alma. So. Uh, so, press the deletions. Additions. Additions, deletions. Deletions. So, we want to add an executive session um, in the middle of the FY25 budget. Okay. Uh, so, between the sewer budget and the town budget. Yeah. Citizens' comment? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually. Uh, I mean, I can sit here if you want me to. I don't want to like cause any riots or anything. Um, I had a chance to sit in on the the budget meeting, the the one on Monday. Um, so I think I'm pretty familiar with this with this budget. Um, and I wanted to say that I'm very pleased with what Eric and his team are doing, and with the support of the select board, especially, and the finance committee. Um, I feel like we're going in the right direction. I think this is, you know, early days yet, obviously. So we haven't gotten where I would like to get, but I, I have confidence that we're going in that direction. So I promise not to stand up in town meeting this year and say, cut the budget by 10% right now, <laughs> um, because I think we're, we're heading in the right direction. Um, I would suggest that the select board and or Eric do a little bit of a of a educational piece on what you're doing, what what we could expect to see in the next few years as we go forward with this, and so that people like me who are impatient to see some progress here will hopefully have some faith that there's some progress going on. So. Um, I also, this is completely off the topic of budgets, but while we're talking about town meeting, I would like to suggest that we put on the agenda to talk about town meeting um, and whether or not voting, I know this year we're voting on everything because it's some strange thing that we passed several years ago and forgot, apparently, um, whether or not we should do a lot less voting in town meeting. Than, than on the Australian ballot. I obviously, you know, holding a town meeting as an informational session or whatever else, I think would make sense, but I'd like to see a lot more. 78 people should not be voting on the budget. Um, and, you know, for the village, that's even more ridiculous. But um, so I would I would like to suggest that, that somebody, that, that there be a discussion of that topic. And everybody else may disagree, you know. So, you know, to me, it's just pure sentimentality at this point. But that's just me. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Wendy. Has Wendy. Been Wendy. Been Wendy. You're on mute. Wendy. Thank you. I uh, thank you, Ray. Um, thank you. Uh, I have. I just want to add a comment following Roger's comment, but then I have a question for the board. Um, the I make a suggestion that. The select board and the village trustees uh, would suggest to them separately can put the um, his, both the town historic village commission and the village historic preservation commission that have been appointed by each board. I'm on the village historic preservation commission. Uh, we could do some homework and present to the community the the history of of town meeting and the benefits and et cetera, so that people are, are sensitized and educated to what really happens and, and why, you know, the values of town meeting. Um, if you, if the boards thought that was a worthwhile um, endeavor, you could ask the commissions. Of course, my fellow commissioners don't know who's saying this, but ask, you know, we're appointed by you. So that might be a, a road to go down. I've heard this idea floated around and really context and history. That's my favorite part of decisions. So um, that's an idea out of Roger's comment. I just wanted to share. But my question tonight, which I was prepared to 
put forward has to do with revenue versus um, budget. I, I also appreciate the time it's being put into reviewing the budget carefully. Um, I think the process has been healthy and transparent and, and um, uh, I really appreciate the time people are putting into it uh, and the sensitive nature of increases. But I'm wondering if the select board has floated amongst yourselves the idea, and I raised this with the village trustees last night at their review meeting and they sent me, they said, this is your jurisdiction. But if we take a hard look at our local option tax opportunities um, and perhaps have those on the ballot. Um, I did a little research. Uh, I spoke with Charlie in, um, in the um, town clerk's office. Uh, we had a vote put forward by the select board two years ago in 20, no, a town meeting 2022. So up will be two years ago. At that time, the rules had us doing Australian ballot because of the COVID. So, but um, the vote was a local 1% options tax for sales tax for retail, not rooms and board, which goes rooms and meals, which goes to the um, EDC per that vote. Um, this was a separate additional 1% on sales. The vote only was turned down or the no only passed by nine votes. It was very you know close. Um, the numbers were strong. Um, we're talking about 417 voters saying yes to the 1% and 426 saying no. Um, <clears throat> I think that the business community felt strongly opposed at the time, but these are new problems that we're facing or, or we're facing them now. They're not new problems, but we're facing them. And uh, I do think that the climate has changed for looking for other revenue. I think the argument for uh, the sales tax versus vis-a-vis -vis no sales tax in New Hampshire falls short. And that was their argument because really our retailers in town are catering to our higher end visitors. I think it's one package, Gen if I were to generalize. So I think there might be an opportunity here to revisit that vote. It would, it would mean the select board <clears throat> deciding they wanna put it on the ballot. So I'm raising the question now in advance vis-a-vis -vis the budget process. And thank you for looking at expenses, but we, we have to look at revenue too. Um, and in the same breath, I would offer the idea that we put a um, either the select board takes a stand on grant money from the EDC or we rephrase redirect EDC funds for short for uh, near projects projects not maintenance but you know the the bonds the issues at hand that need influx of cash so that's my my I raised this and I ask the question is does the select board have this on there in is that in your on your minds these two ideas so the option tax always is on my mind um, and I agree it's not the locals and it's in one percent for seventy dollar seventy gallon dollar gallon of paint sends you to West Leb then you should, probably shouldn't be living in Woodstock. Um, as far as re allocating the EDC funds, I think that's going to have to be a public vote also. Yes, both of these would be by your decision, I believe, Charlie explained, by your decision to put it on the ballot, we all vote. Correct. It would be the language, the choice of language. I know the language for the 1% additional sales um, local option tax two years ago, the language was specifically the money would be for specific capital improvements, or maybe it was for the capital, capital, capital reserve, budget. capital, capital budget. reserve. Yeah. But yeah. there was a lot of concern that we hadn't been saving money. So, so the language and the direction, I think voters like specifics, you know, it's easier, but if we targeted a goal, I mean, and then it can be revisited, it's not an open-ended plan. It's all in the language, but 
each of those would be separate articles on the ballot for the voters. So if you were to consider that. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening and um, thanks again for your work. I think that's it. Anyone else? Any citizens? Oh. Okay. Start with the sewer budget. Yeah. Um, so the sewer budget um, that was presented uh, last Wednesday um, has not changed at all since then. Um, the so the two things, the two or three big things I want to point out, and then we go through individual lines if you want. Um, the auto sampler line and the Kindred Kin Book Stabilization uh, Project. Um, that's about eighty-seven thousand uh, dollars. We do have capital reserves uh, over hundred thousand dollars in repairs and maintenance for on the sewer um capital and so my recommendation would be to fund those two projects using capital reserves to keep the uh sewer rate lower than um a lower keep, keep the sewer rate somewhat low um so that'd be my recommendation to the board on that one um on project ng scrp 16 uh which is a work doing by um the bayside hotel on route four by the states which they're forcing us to pay for the work because they have to move our sewer line uh it's 164 thousand dollars 268 um so the chair and i were talking today um over the potential maybe looking at a loan instead uh to cover that cost over uh, a few years to kind of spread the cost out and again keep try to keep the sewer rates at a reasonable amount um, knowing what's coming down the line uh, for sewer users in the next few years. Um, so those things we can discuss um, now about the budget um, and or we can kind of go through the whole sewer budget if there's any individual questions on it. Um, so I'll leave it up to the boards on where you want to start. Anyone? Uh, oh. I, I, I just think, you know, it, it scares me that we have a need to stabilize a brook with the amount of um, rain and everything we've had. So I, I would support trying to get that done without it um, increasing sewer rates. Yeah. I just had a question on overtime and how that is that our sewer employees union employees and how is that? And like, yeah, there wasn't yeah. a three year average or so overtime. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I actually pulled the overtime, um, overtime and on call uh, for last year, and it was about forty-eight thousand um, dollars. And that's before you consider the three percent increase they'll get, as you, and they are union members, uh, so they get uh, overtime when overtime needed. Uh, they also the way um, the rules set up for wastewater, we have to have someone on call twenty-four-seven. Okay. So on the weekends, there's always someone on call. Uh, for a certain amount of hours if, if need be or they're actually in the plant for a certain amount of hours um so that, that is kind of that cost right there so is this something that would be remediated by more staff or not remediated by more staff i don't know the answer to the question to be to be honest okay. with you uh, i have to look into it i don't know if um the on-call will go away or not in that sense um i i think um the way that would work if we hired somebody for weekends yeah you know, okay. weekends and right now benefit yeah yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, Greg, anything? No, I'm listening at this point. Jill had Jill. her hands up already. Oh, Jill. Yes, I, I didn't quite catch what Eric said about the project with all the numbers that was going to cost 164000 I wonder if you could repeat that slowly. Yeah, so there's a project. Um, Bryside Hotel? Bryside. On Route 12. I'm, so, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't understand you. By which hotel? Brayside. Brayside on Thank Route you. 4. Okay. Um, so the state's coming in and doing work. They've started work already. They're going to do all the work this spring. Um, they have to move our sewer line, uh, but because we own the sewer line, they're making the municipality pay for it. Um, so we had someone come in, and I think they presented to the board in August or September, I believe they were here. Um, and this is the, the quote they've given us for the work. So 
they are requiring us to move the sewer pipe and we have to pay? They're moving it and they're requiring us to pay. And there's no, so, are there any grants for this? I, I'm going to look into that. I haven't found any yet, but uh, this was a total mm -hmm. cost of the project. So I wanted to include it to at least this other conversation. Okay. So my comment is I'm actually worried about using capital reserve payments to pay for this because the capital reserve payments are going to be so demanded in the next few years. Would it not be better to put up sewer taxes a little bit now rather than an awful lot later? Uh, so the conversation about capital reserve was were actually uh, for two different projects. Uh, one is the Keaton Brook stabilization, which is $71,000. And the other is the auto sampler that we need legally for at the task fill station. Uh, so it's a total of uh, $87,000. So my comment is the same though. Why not put taxes up a little bit rather than a lot next year? And so it just creates not taxes, it's the sewer rates. Okay, sewer rates, so same thing. Like we still pay them. Why not put sewer rates up a little bit instead of holding them artificially and then having a big increase next year? What do we need? That, uh, Yes. So I'll say right now um, we're at a seven and a half percent increase in the sewer rates, and we're still in one hundred forty-one thousand dollars deficit. So if we if we did nothing, um, we're looking at potentially a twenty percent increase in sewer rates. Yeah, about about nineteen, maybe nineteen percent increase in sewer rates. But that's if you wanted to cover it all by sewer rates. Yes. So why not cover it, some of it by sewer rates and put the taxes up, put the rate up a little bit more? So split the, split the difference. So that, that, so sorry, say that again, Jill? Well, if you're using sewer, we are not paying sufficient money it, with sewer rates to do the work that is required for our sewer infrastructure. So why delay what the real cost is? Why not put a little bit of an increase now and a little bit of an increase next year on top of the basic increase that we have to have? Yeah, so she's saying like instead of 19 or seven and a half, increasing it to like 12 or 13 so that, yeah, yeah. we're incrementally we, we increasing. Still, I don't even know what the rate is. So there was a current sewer rate. rate. I'd have to look it up what the exact one for this year is. I'm not sure. Um, so, so Jill, like we, we can we can think about that. Yeah. yeah. Thank so like you. Taking the 164 and and paying 80 out of rates and then 80 in loan. I mean, I don't know how that math would work out, but that's I think what she's. No, I think the one that so we try and get a bond for the whole thing or a loan for the whole thing. But it still goes on our rate. Right. But, yeah. My my point is that. Well, and actually, I'll make, my point is that we can't afford to not increase sewer rates. And then the next point is, in both of these works, are they really the whole town or the sewer rates? So I hope you're also going to discuss who should be paying for sewer wastewater treatment increases. Okay. Thank you. Well, I don't even think we should be paying for the 164,000. I agree. The state, uh, is the, I mean, if that's the case, when we replace it, if we have to repair a sewer line on Route 4, which is let the state come in and repave it. That's the, you know, I mean, that's basically the same thing. Yeah. But we can't beat the state, so. Um, so just kind of back up the overview. Uh, if you look at the executive uh, section of the sewer, um, it's uh, more or less executive you can see on the on the town side just the allocation for sewer that comes from um 25 15 is what we do um same thing with our office administration um same with auditing town accountant um and then when we're in the wastewater um you know i uh, we talked about this a lot, a lot last time with the trustees really trying to take out the overtime from the salary line so we've seen the salary line is actually what is union negotiated or is agreed upon in a contract and the overtime is a separate account funds we actually track how much overtime is being used and then have a better idea of like Laura asked earlier can we 
fund this better by having another position instead of causing overtime or not. Um, in the past, all most overtime and um, on call was thrown into the salary line as a whole. So it's really kind of muddied the waters of how much we're actually wor working. Um, and then if you kind of go through um, the operating line for all these, uh, besides the three projects we just touched upon, um, they're mostly level funded uh, or slight increases, decreases, depending on um, conversations with Mark and, and Tim. Um, so really when it comes to the sewer, at least in my opinion, uh, the, the, the big questions are on those three projects and how we wanna handle them. Um, because you, if really you take away the 164 project um, and the sewer rates are probably going to be my marginal and we have a, a, a balanced budget on it. Um, so those are the kind of the big three decisions the board will need to make about the, about the sewer. And we don't have to make them today. Obviously, this is one of the many conversations we're going to have. Um, I can look into what a loan will look like. I can look into total capital reserves um, and so on and so forth. So. If there's any direction on the board on those things, I can look into it. I think looking for a loan makes a lot of sense. I guess my question is, why is the state making us do the sewer line if it's a fair project? I, 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 because it's our sewer line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, this is one of the first conversations I had when I first started here, and I thought they were like, that was a practical joke on me because the day they came in and said, oh, it's in cost. And I was like, no, you're kidding me, right? And they're like, no, no, no. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, and they can just do the project when they want. Oh. Yeah. Are we locked into that number or could it change? That's the quote they've given me. I checked, I confirmed the quote again uh, about a month ago. Uh, it was still the same quote. Where does it move? Off to one side or deeper, or I believe it's moved a margin to the side, but I'll confirm and, and get that information for you. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but um, yeah. I mean, if it's not voided or cheaper, then obviously that'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, I, I guess I just don't understand why they're dictating because it's their the project state. because it's the state that we get. Yeah, them. basically, okay. Will this make I, it I better? Agree. Will it make it up to date that section of? Sewer line, or is it just a few feet? Or I think it's pretty substantial. But again, I have to. Okay. I want to look through all the uh, information. You're putting a new um, culvert in. Oh. And you probably got to put it deeper. I put the culvert. You can't put the sewer line deeper because then it's going to. We're going to have. Well, See that? whether it's pumped or gravity. Yeah. Yes. Gravity is wrong. I think. But in either case, I think that, I think it's just in their way, quite honestly. <laughs> so that instead of putting the culvert slide in it and they want to drop it in, be my guess. And that's a hundred and sixty-four thousand we have left to put. Yeah. It's probably a part of trust that they're doing it for all the equipment. Or does it take long equipment? Yeah. Wendy, do you have a question? A thought. Thank you, Ray. I have a thought. Would this be tied into, is it my, um, my understanding is the Brayside is now housing for employees for the inn? Yep. Yeah. Would it be, t would the state be involved and is it tied into, you know, the housing thing? No. Uh, it's just would a they, thought. Would the state be more, not more, Oh, well, we need if, if they, you know, workforce, workforce housing. I, I, I can ask them. Um, well, I, it, I, right. Or is it driving the, I don't know what, like Ray has a good, he knows the brass tax, yeah. but what's driving it is, that was what made me think of it. But then Susan, you raise a really good angle. Maybe that's a an um, incentive for the state to help us out. No, so if, if it's tied, money. if it's tied to the Brayside. So anyway. That's my thought. It was just to share. Thanks. I think that the state's proposal that this has to happen predates the in buying the bracelet. Yeah. Okay. So it's, that's not connected. Got it. So, so yeah. Where's my point? The town hired a lobbyist. Oh, interesting. Um, it had something to do with keeping the overweight, overweight trucks or something. Oh, yeah, that mm -hmm. didn't work out so well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How'd that work? Because it just seems like an outrageous. Well, we're going to have. 
I mean, can we talk to Allison? And, and, um, yeah. Yeah. No. Natasha. Natasha's going to be here. They're both going to be here at, for our December meeting. For the 19th. Yeah. Unless they listen to this meeting before. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, any more questions in the store? Can I just ask how long we, how many years we've been in deficit, or is this the first year we're in deficit? So we won't be in deficit when we balance the budget. Okay. It's uh, it's just that 164 is a conversation we need to have, and that'll put us. If so, if you look at that 164, if we find a way to fund it, or if we got a loan for thirty thousand dollars, so we're we're in a surplus by one hundred ten thousand dollars. You know, so it's just that 164 is what's put in the sewer. Budget currently in deficits at a seven and a half percent increase in sewer rates. Uh, but if you take that expense out right away, then we're in a, in a surplus by a high degree, and we lower the rate to a three percent, two percent increase, or something like that. Anybody else on Zoom? Uh, I think there's just uh, Jill and Wendy and Carrie. A small crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, yeah. So, you want to go to executive session? Uh, the, yeah. Yeah. Is this going to be short? Yeah. Okay. I'll go downstairs. <laughs> do we want to go in the room? Or we can, we can, Roger, we can do it here. Okay. And I'll, I'll go downstairs. So I don't, okay. Somebody might be out. Okay. Yeah. We'll come get you. Good make popcorn. No concessions for yeah. <laughs> for the no concessions for uh, Yeah, Nikki, are you there? Did we already do the motion or did I miss it? No, you need motion. Oh, I would uh, move we move we go into executive session to discuss a contract. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, hold on. One sec.
Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I can um, hear you. Yeah. So the the town budget, um, I, I messed around a little bit with it today when uh, I met with uh, Ray. We had talked about a few things, and one of his ideas was the increase of the ten thousand dollars. So I did that. Then I played around with some things, and then I took the ten thousand dollars away because we didn't decide upon it. So there is a ten thousand dollars surplus as currently presented in the budget in front of me. Um, and what that really is. Um, is the first thing we looked at um, was community TV. Um, so right now uh, that's not funded in my budget. Um, but if it was to be funded, then the surplus would kind of basically go away. Um, so that's the one thing kind of outstanding on the, on the top line if the board wants to kind of discuss the pros and cons of that. Um, after you, if you wanna. Well, last year there were two line items for community TV. One, they were they had lost a lot of board members and were trying to get kickstarted again. And so we told them for that year only, rather than taking out a petition, to ask for donations, we'd just give them the money in the budget. But I thought we made it pretty clear it was that year only. And then we've always had a line item in the budget because they actually came to meetings and recorded the meetings and we paid them to do that. And it doesn't seem to me that they they come to the meetings anymore. So I was actually the one that said, Derek, I don't know that we need that line item anymore because I, I you know, I, I think they broadcast the meetings, but they just take the Zoom. Right. Yeah, I think he sends them to the Zoom and they put it on their YouTube page right. and broadcast that way. Yeah. So it just seemed, I mean, it looked like even last year we didn't, we gave them, you know, it was $1,200, right? So. Just didn't seem we needed to keep that in the budget since it's not an item we spend money on. Yeah. I'd be fine advising them if they are interested to move to a special article. Yeah, they can do the special article for the, you know, for the yeah. fundraising aspect. Yeah. But this I think was when they used to come to every meeting and provided a service. Yeah. We paid them. Yeah. I think it makes sense to move into a special article. Like an um, so the only other thing under culture recreation um, is the Woodstock Rec Center um, actually sent a full budget to me, a breakdown of what how they use the money. Um, so they're requesting 235. Uh, in the past, we've given them for some reason 231, 928. Um, so I have what their original request is of 235 in there. Um, so we're talking about a $4,000 difference in uh, two things. Uh, I don't know how the board feels about funding what their total request is or level funding from the previous years. Uh, again, it was four thousand. Oh, sorry, three thousand dollars difference actually. Um, so, well, there's always been talk about getting these off the budget to make special articles, mm -hmm. and. I think in my mind, the thing with the rec is that a lot of towns, the rec is part of the town. Yep. Right. Fully within the budget. So. Um, but we have no oversight over it. No. We had talked, Eric and I had talked about having the four, I think there's four nonprofits that are in the fixed budget, having them come this summer or, you know, after the budget is done mm -hmm. and talk to us about what services are they providing to the town. Um, what, you know, giving us their financials um, so that we can make a little bit more educated decision on whether they should be in this part of the budget. And actually, I think even having the nonprofits that are, yeah. are special articles actually come to a public meeting um, because, you know, the Saturday at town meeting, it seems like only about half of them show up yeah. to speak. Yeah. And we have flirted in years past not recent past, but probably pre COVID with, you know, does it make sense to bring things like the rec center fully into the town fold? So you do have control. So that's a separate discussion, just adding it for flavor. Well, I don't know why we can't have the three of them come in. Cause this is, not, there'll be another budget meeting and have the three of them come in for a quick 10 minutes, 15 minutes. 
five minutes. This is why, you know. Between now and March, you're saying? Yeah. Oh, you mean now and trim now, March between now and December 31st yeah. when we want this kind of locked down? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, if I wanted the money, I'd be here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, especially with the rec center, I'm, I've been concerned every year by the fact that essentially it's a set amount of money that's being presented to us with no idea. And I, I hope somebody has some idea what's going on there, but it's like a slush fund, basically. Um, and I think we should get away from that as much as possible. Again, that may not be doable this year, and it may not be fair to them this year, but I'd also like sort of entities like that that are getting town funding but are not controlled by the town to see what their revenue potential is. I mean, gyms make money. So I, you know, I don't know what the fees are to join the rec center, um, but I would like to know if there's room to raise those fees. I mean, obviously the library can't raise fees. I don't, you know, I guess they could charge people to use the bathroom or something, but but with that especially, I mean, uh, to to echo what Wendy said, we need to look for revenue, um, not just kind of look at the bottom line all the time, which is which is you know it's what we need to do. But especially when we're handing two hundred thousand dollars and change to the rec center every year for really nothing. I don't understand what it's for, or for that matter, the little theater, which as far as I can tell, never does theater. Um, so what do they do in there? I don't know. What do they do with this money? So that's, that's just, and I have one other question. Can I bring it up now? Or do you want me to wait until you're yeah, here? Yeah. Um, so we're putting aside capital reserve for a fire truck. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't know when you, when you put money aside for something like a fire truck, is that like, is that like set in stone that it's this kind of truck? We're buying an American La France or whatever the state of the art is or something. No. So what uh, my understanding of Trishni here is they put away, you know, let's say $25,000 for four years. Okay. Buy in the fifth year and use that $100,000 as a down payment to kind of lower okay. the bond going forward. So I would, think it would be useful before any more purchases take place to know whether we're buying the right kind of equipment. Mm -hmm. Because in last year's town report, and I believe in the one before, there were like three or four structure fires mm -hmm. in the in the entire year. Um, so do they really need to dispatch a fire truck or would they be better off with some kind of you know, is there a more efficient way to do this? You know, since I, I'm sure a lot of times they're going to help somebody up yep. or something like that. And you don't need to be driving, I don't know how much, a $600,000 vehicle to help somebody up. So I'm wondering if at some point before these purchases take place, we could actually start looking at at what's the most efficient utilization of, of our vehicle budget. Okay. I will say... Uh... Before a fire truck would be purchased, it would do a process with bids, and then the chief would bring those three bids or whatever to the, the right. board for their approval. Right. So there will be time to have this conversation as well. Yeah, so, I would just, I just would think it would. Be, I mean, with everything, yeah. obviously, and this is, I, I think it's just a, it's a good time to start looking at what the data says, and maybe they really have a lot more fired things where they need to spray water around, but four structure fires doesn't seem like that many. But it's, it's just kind of talking about that. It was interesting to me that, you know, we've just always bought, I would assume in the highway department, we've always bought a backhoe. And then Mark came and said, you know, that's really not a very efficient right. piece right. of machinery. I'd rather have a rubber tire excavator. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's kind of the same question that maybe we should be having with other departments. Yeah. It's just because you've yeah. always had the pumper and a ladder yeah. truck, is that what we really need going forward? And I don't know the answer. I'm just yeah, saying I mean, I the questions well, you that, asked. That's, Elijah did that when he bought the 10 wheelers instead of six wheelers. Okay. So. Um, so just one more point in the rec center. So um, they did, to their credit, email me a uh, breakdown of what the total money would go to, towards. Uh, so just I'll say it quickly. Uh, $86,700 would go towards Vail Field. Uh, for 
program staff supplies uh, etc um, 84,300 would go towards the pool again staff uh, utilities supplies uh, training equipment uh, chemicals um, and then 64,000 would go towards the admin budget which is again salaries insurance maintenance uh, gym rentals uh, school activities um, telephones uh, supplies stuff like that so that's they so they did supply kind of how the breakdown will go uh, so I just want to make sure publicly I say that uh, on, on their behalf but you know they're in a village let the village take care of it. <laughs> right. did we get their um, revenue and their endowment figures as well? uh, so on that uh, they allocate uh, $8,000 of ill income to kind of offset some of the costs there so the total cost they're asking for is 94 7 but with eight thousand dollars of revenue it's 86 7. uh swimming pool is fourteen thousand dollars of revenue and again i don't know how much revenue they actually bring in it's the revenue they're allocating you know as they give us their budget um so eighty four thousand dollars there and then there's obviously no revenue on that side so they're projecting uh twenty two thousand dollars of revenue they'll offset some of the, the ch uh, expenses they're asking the town to cover. I would be interested in having, well, I think we should have a conversation because I, you know, with gym fees, pool fees, fees to have your kids play soccer, yeah. that yeah. revenue seems pretty low. Yeah, I'm guessing it's just an allocation of the revenue, not all the revenue okay. um, would be my assumption. Um, I don't want to yeah. assume. Um, okay, so for the time being, I'll keep the record culture budget as it is and we're going to make small changes before we can um health officer level funded um uh can we just go back to the board's budget uh we need to think about the energy coordinator oh we're not there, we're not there yet oh we'll get there in a second yeah sorry uh health officer level funded uh government buildings um Level funded, but uh, the town hall loan repayments over. So there's a twenty-one thousand dollars savings there. Uh, now we're at the the, the board's um, budget. Um, so salaries, benefits, level funded. Uh, legal services, uh, level funded. Um, I did get a notice just saying in the mail that the uh, legal the um, lawyers we normally use are increasing the fees. First time they increased them since pre-COVID, um, so there will be added to cost there. Um, last year we didn't fully use them, um, but it's always good to have money aside for lawyers just in case. Um, everything else, more or less, level funded when it comes to the board's budget. Uh, the one thing I'm saying that Ray wants to talk about is your regional energy coordinator. Um, so that's budgeted right now at thirty-nine thousand uh, dollars. We had them come to the last meeting, remember, uh, to kind of advocate for what they do and, and what what they want. Um, so I mean, this is kind of decision. When we make this, uh, if we fund it, then clearly we're going to sign a new contract. If we don't fund it, clearly we won't sign a new contract. Um, so if we want to talk about that now, right? I just think that you know um, we've been paying for this. I think five or six years now, and they've come up with projects in the town building. And part of the part of the thing was they were going to find money and find funds for us. And if we stopped after we got the projects, we could probably use this, use these funds to pay for these projects that we're doing now. Um, they, I, I I just think that. You know, this we're spending money for them to spend money, and I don't know if it's worth it. Uh, to me, it's not worth it right now. So, it's my understanding, did we vote? Did the town vote for this position in the recent past? We voted to have the position, but then it was out of the budget. So okay. it was voted to be on the budget. Okay. And when was it? When was it? Do you know when it was voted to be in the budget or voted to have the position? 
COVID, I'm good at it pre COVID. Good at it. I'm not looking into it. Okay. Yeah, three, four years ago. It was, so, it was pre COVID. So, not like 10 years ago. No, like no. Pre no. no, it was pre COVID. And it was also like paired with the goal at the same time to reduce emissions. Yeah, by the uh, so this in 2019. I think it was the budget of either 2019 or 2020, 2020. and it was part of our objective to reduce our emissions um, significantly by. I don't remember what timeline we had in place, but it was, you know, tied in with our objectives as a town. But the thing that went to the town wide vote was that bond to do all the work in the that's, building. Yeah, that's a different not plan. not joining this. It's a. It's not really our position, it's a shared position yeah. with a whole bunch of towns. Okay. And that, so we chip in. Yeah, so what Susan talking about was the EEI budget fund there, which is the $83,738. So that's a bond payment okay. for all the work's being done. And that's what we're locked into by a town vote. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments on the regional energy mm -hmm. coordinator? Jill, did you have something? I have lots to say, but when um, when they presented to you, they showed you a table of how much money had been saved, and that was quite considerable and easily outweighed the salary that was a contribution that we're making. And they also told you about a grant that they're getting that will reduce the thirty nine thousand by several thousand. So that's one thing that they've done immediately, and they're um, they. They have a grant right now that can potentially help us a lot in the town hall to buy equipment that should not be sneezed at. <clears throat> well, they've got till July 1st, so. But I, I understand that. But again, they keep saying that Woodstock, we, we can apply for the grants, but Woodstock probably won't get them because we're too rich. They did get one. They, there was the initial grant to do a study with town hall, and then once mm -hmm. that study's done, that's the one that I guess could be up to five hundred thousand. Could be, yeah. But they they secured the initial grant, and the I don't remember how much it was. Four thousand dollars, which as Jill mentioned, could be paid for this salary for it's this fiscal year when we got it, so it could pay for this fiscal year four thousand dollars of that salary. Then the second grant, which is they come and do an audits of to the other town hall, which we're waiting for them to do. And then the third step, I believe, is when you can get the uh, extra grant money to do repairs at the town hall. It was the HVAC, wasn't it? I believe so, yeah. I thought, they, thought EEI did, the, did that. that the e, EEI work did not touch town hall because at the time we were talking about plans to do bigger work. So you won't find, I don't believe they're in the town hall. So again, I, I don't think we're making a decision as you're currently today. Again, we have a balanced budget with them. So if we decide not to go forward with that, it would just, again, surplus or decrease in tax rates. I think the last thing I'll say about that is it, it also seems like from talking to uh, Jeff, there were two Jeffs, Jeff. um, that we could maybe achieve more with this position if we gave more guidance and more of an mm -hmm. idea of what success could look like. And so, um, yeah. Yeah, but they should be giving us the guidance and not us giving them the guidance. No, um, okay, Ray, may I correct this? Because I was involved from the very beginning in hiring this person. Um, the, we hire an expert. So yes, they certainly come to us and talk about how to do things. But if we want them to concentrate on a particular building, we need to give them that guidance. That's what they're talking about. All right. So it's just like an employee that we can choose to manage or we can choose to be told what to do by them. So we, we, we don't have justification for at the end of the year saying, well, you haven't done your job, so we're not going to pay you. I don't think um, Eric treats his employees like that. <clears throat> Let's move on, please. Yeah. Um... So I guess I'll, I'll start next with the executive our line item um, in there. Um, I have a, a new position uh, allocated at uh, $70,000. Um, as I discussed on Wednesday, um, still not quite sure how that would play out, but one of the ideas would be um, 
and this is to the board to kind of be the first person in its agendas, booklets, um, the kind of first point of contact for the boards and citizens that have questions for the boards. So we could kind of try to reallocate some time internally of the staff we already have to let them do other things like the personnel policy, um, like more zoning planning um, as well. Um, so that's currently still in the budget um, with what we have right now. But again, um, it's it'll be up to the boards. I don't know if you guys want to fund that or not. I'm happy to go in more detail with that. Um, and honestly, I mean, we can go through the whole budget. Uh, most things are, uh, for the most part, a little funny. I'll, there's one thing I'll, I'll touch upon in a second. Um, but if you go through its salaries and um, benefits that have increased, uh, salaries are going to go up uh, 3% to 4.5%, depending on union contracts. Uh, benefits right now are projecting a 7.5% uh, increase on benefits. Um, in capital reserves, for the most part, are level funded. Um, Going through quickly and trying to think of things that will come up that will be different for you guys to look at. Um, everything is level funded. Um, you know, we talked, about, um, we talked originally about an ask on the fire department for retention bonuses. Um, that's currently not funded. Um, it's, uh, I'm in favor of retention bonuses, I think for all employees, not just one department. Um, but I would love to see that. But again, under the consideration of when I talked on Wednesday about wanting to see, you know, a budget with hundred to a thousand dollars more in it. One of those things would probably be some kind of retention bonuses for employees. Um, I, when I put together this budget, my concern was tax rates for everyone and also an understanding of what's coming down the pipeline for residents so i did not want to get too far ahead of myself uh and give the boards a budget that they could work with and if your decision is to include some of these things and we're doing knowing full well what the uh, impact will be on the tax rates um but that's kind of one thing in the fire ambulance i want to point out if that's not included but was asked for by chief green um So the only real thing that is of something that's new um, in the budget, uh, you'll see on the planning zoning, um, currently it sits in dues, uh, subs and meetings. Um, you'll see an increase from last year of 7,444 to 23,640 this year. And luckily Laura's here today, so she can help me uh, last night. Uh, I had to do this by myself, um, but basically the short term rental software program that plan and zoning is advocating for um, what it is able to do is kind of go online and search and see who is actually um, in woodstock renting short-term rentals uh, and then so we have the data of who is actually registered and paying the correct fees and who's out there doing it without following the, the guidance of the town and village have set up uh, by doing this we can help at short-term rentals in compliance with our, with our rules and regulations, uh, which we all want, and advocate people to follow the right rules and then have an actual idea of what short-term rentals are actually out there instead of just guessing. Um, currently, uh, Chief Green, once a year, will create a fake email account and go on all these websites and send emails to see if these people are actually active or not. That's our enforcement. That's our research. Um, the chief has more important things to do as is everyone else. Uh, but that's kind of what we're at at this point. Um, so that is kind of the general idea of the software. Um, the added goal of the software is if certain uh, new rules uh, come out of the planning commission with which they're currently talking about, and then those rules come in front of the select board and the trustees and they're approved uh, with those new changes and this software, uh, we could see a substantial increase in revenue uh, starting sometime next year and then continuing on into the future. Um, conservatively, somewhere between maybe fifty and hundred thousand dollars of new revenue could be generated in in the perfect storm scenario where all these things work out together. Um, 
so of all the things that were, were asked of me in this budget and of the boards of the budget, uh, this is one of the few ones I, I stuck with because it will allow us to keep things people in, in compliance, but also it has the potential to get new revenue, which is something we desperately need in Woodstock. So for me, $20,000 split between the village and town was something that was worth considering and looking into for the tangible benefits that we could receive a year from now. Um, worst case scenario, it's a failure or the rules and regulations of the planning commission don't come to fruition. And then we spend $20,000 and but at least it's minimum we have people in compliance with a short term of the policy. Um, so that's kind of the one thing I want to point out in this full budget of that's we are familiar to you. And if you have any question on that, I'll do my best, but we also have an expert with us as well. So and this yeah. is done through zoning. Is he done through the planning and zoning department? Yes. Um, Roger has a question. Roger. Yeah, right, yeah. I would just like to advocate very strongly for for including that in the budget. Um, I think both from a compliance standpoint, which is important to the well-being of this town, um, and from a potential revenue. And you know, I doubt we're going to see all that revenue in one year. But I mean, great if it's if it essentially pays for itself and then brings in more revenue. That's great. And at the same time deals with some of the issues around short term rentals. Thank you. Um, everything else is again, you know, more or less straightforward um, in the budget itself. I, you, I had some time to look through it. So if there's any other questions or some questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if not, I think we kind of go over the, the few questions we have outstanding currently and kind of go from there. Um, it seems like there's no current question. So a recap right now, um, at a 6% uh, increase in tax for the town, uh, we currently have a $10,000 surplus. Um, this uh, budget includes the software for short-term rentals, includes adding one new staff member, um, or money allocated to one new staff member, uh, currently includes the regional uh, energy coordinator uh, and currently includes the requests, typical requests from um, the rec center, the library, and so on. Uh, the one thing we don't have is a $10,000 for community TV, which I feel the board today decided not to fund. Um, so that's kind of where the budget sits as of right now. Um, I can reach out to those. Um, Nonprofits see if they want to attend a meeting sometime in the next week or two uh, to go over, you know, their budgets if they want. So that would be the rec center, the library, and it is on the team center, and the rec center, Pentangle. and Pentangle. Yeah, I think that. I mean, yeah. I, I just feel like we have that responsibility to the taxpayers to yeah. Yeah. inquire. Yeah. I would also, I mean, separately, but together, I would also be a fan of, of yeah, more uh, transparency when it comes to who's the special articles and, and how that's impacting the taxpayers as well. Yes, I think the conversation we've had had is, I think we can do this now, but I think we've talked about going forward, uh, maybe in the spring, having everyone come in, but also making part of the budget season going forward to when someone does submit a petition, we ask them to come at some point before town meeting and talk about their actual organization. <clears throat> yeah. uh, so the board and residents can ask questions, not just on the day of town meeting. I'd also, I, I'd be fine, or uh, I would suggest, um, because it goes in the town report too, and they usually present like a letter yeah. that yeah. goes with the request. And I'd really love to give folks like a template for that of like what we, what we think the taxpayers want to see. So like, Maybe we could even ask like what the calculated tax rate increase would be if you voted yes for the special article. We did that. And how much they spend in the town. Actually, somebody was asking just anecdotally, someone was asking today outside of the farmer's market for a signature for special ed, something or other. And I asked just out of curiosity if she knew how much they spent in Woodstock. And she's like, well, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Right. But 
we we did we did have a in one of the town reports what if you voted calculated what that increase would be for the taxes and everything passed yeah well i think not just the total but like separately oh, no, oh it was separate separate yeah okay. yeah if you voted for this one your tax would go up this yeah. much i i think yeah i think whatever we can do to increase literacy because there's like carrie said there's a lot of people that have no idea I, the same thing has happened to me with the library people have no idea that uh, the library puts forward a special article and we also contribute $154,000 to the library. Right. Um, and I love the library and I'm a proud patron of the library, but you know, I just feel like it is, it's important to understand how much money is going and in what, what channels. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we have some decisions to make. Yeah. Unless we want to fund everything. Um, so before we adjourn, do you want to set another date? date? Everybody's favorite time. Let's have another meeting. Let's have more meetings. Do you keep the race? And... I got you want to do something up. next week or? We got the 19th coming up. The 19th is your uh, regular schedule meeting. Uh, the following week would be the week between Christmas and the New Year's. And we kind of have the budget more or less locked by then. Can we do week. something next week? Yeah, so um, the trustees in the 12th will be meeting at 6. We tried 30. this before and we never, we couldn't come up with, at least if it's a night meeting, oh, we couldn't yeah. come up with yeah. anything. We could do a day meeting. Yeah. Um, if it's on Zoom or something, people can't get in. A day meeting works for me. Not so easy for Greg. No, just throw it out there. <laughs> we'll figure it out. If it's not snowing. At my days that are <laughs> the easiest for me are Wednesday and Friday. Next week. During the day. Yeah, I would do Wednesday night. That's the only thing I got. But. Do you <laughs> Wednesday to the day? I, I can do Wednesday to the day. Wednesday, just so we have more time. Yeah. You know, just saves two days. 6 a.m.? <laughs> that works. Class, yeah. That's for me. <laughs> you going to class? Wait, when? What did you just say? Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think so, that would violate the open meeting. Yeah, yeah somehow. somehow. <laughs> so the 13th is what, what's on the table right now? Yeah. The 13th during the day? I'm, I'm free all day. I had 10 o'clock down here at one point that we were going to do a meeting at 10, and then I crossed it out. I, I still have the 13th at 10 on my calendar, so let's right. do that. So who couldn't make one day? We did this one instead because yeah. we tried to do a night. So are you okay Wednesday the 10th? Yeah. yeah. At, what, at 10 o'clock? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And the idea is that at the 13th we'll have, we'll decide, right? Just so I'm Ideally, afraid. yeah, right, everything. We're yeah. deciding on the second. Yeah, I don't know if we can get the non-profits in by then, but I'll ask them okay. tomorrow morning. I just want to know what my homework is. Yeah, I think uh, I think we I would want some decision. You know, I mean, we talked about, you know, just the energy point, for example, then. it's $40,000. So if that is hypothetically cut, you know, we could you know, reall reallocate that somewhere. And then that's a separate conversation where that money goes. Lower the tax rate. Lower the tax rate, we'll do different conversations. So, um, or some of the stuff is things we want to talk about. So 13th or 10th. Could I just make a suggestion that on the energy coordinator specifically, the last time I saw numbers from them, it had revenue, but it didn't have the costs of projects. And it would be really useful to be able to compare that revenue to the actual cost of the project. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure they can do it. I mean, if they're scoping out these projects to get grants, which is the revenue, then they should have an idea how much it's going to cost, at least a rough idea. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? 
Bye. Bye.